Anne, an ordinary girl with her own dreams and aspirations, puts a familiar face on the overwhelming historical tragedy of the Holocaust. The diary she kept from June 14, 1942 to August 1, 1944, the personal account of a family in hiding, arouses our sense of responsibility toward humanity. Once published, her diary became an enduring symbol of hope and freedom. Translated into 67 languages and read by millions of people, Anne's diary continues to contribute to the worldwide effort to uphold human rights. After World War I, the Versailles Treaty forced Germany to accept full responsibility for the war. The German government had to pay enormous reparations to other countries. Defeated, Germany became very poor. This economic hardship increased during the Great Depression, leaving Germany vulnerable. The Nazi party took advantage of the unfortunate circumstances to gain power. Hitler promised to bring jobs to people and to restore Germany to its former glory. According to the Nazis, the Jews were their worst enemies, the source of all problems. Amidst this turmoil, Annalise Marie Frank was born on June 12, 1929 in Frankfurt, Germany to Otto and Edith Frank. Just weeks after Anne's birth, the Nazi Party Day rally at Nuremberg drew more than 100,000 people and the Nazis became the second largest political party in Germany. Hitler became Chancellor of Germany on January 30, 1933. The Frank family was sitting at the table listening to the radio when it was announced. At once, the Franks began their plan to leave the country. By 1934, the Franks were all in the Netherlands and they had made themselves at home in Amsterdam, where Anne's childhood was full of happiness and friends. Her parents tried their best to hide the existence of the Nazis from Anne and her older sister Margot. This became difficult as government legislation, like the Nuremberg Laws, sought to restrict the rights of its citizens. In 1940, the Germans invaded the Netherlands and Anne's life began its drastic change. Jews were forced to wear yellow stars to identify themselves as Jews. They were banned from theaters and parks, forbidden to attend public schools and to use public transportation. They weren't allowed to take photographs, own bikes, or radios. They could only shop between 3 and 5 o'clock and had imposed curfew. Eventually, all Jewish businesses were banned. On June 12, 1942, Anne's 13th birthday, she received a diary. I hope I shall be able to confide in you completely, as I have never been able to do to anyone before, and I hope that you will be a great support and comfort to me. In her diary, she confides the deteriorating situation around her. We could not do this, and we were forbidden to do that. But life went on in spite of it all. Our freedom was strictly limited, yet things were still bearable. Despite Dutch protests, Germans began rounding up Jews and sending them to concentration camps. On July 5, 1942, a call-up notice came from Margot to report to a labor camp. The Franks knew they had to disappear immediately. With the help of Otto Frank's co-workers, including Me Peace, the family set off the next morning to their hiding place, the old laboratory above Otto's office. Their helpers were now responsible for their survival. Entire families did not typically hide together. It was easier to hide one person than a group. Even so, the Franks felt that they had enough supplies to support more people, and within the first year, four others joined them in the secret annex. During their two years in hiding, Anne continued to keep her diary. March 7, 1944. I don't think of all the misery, but of the beauty that still remains. April 11, 1944. Surely the time will come when we are people again and not just Jews. May 26, 1944. Nothing can crush us more than this restlessness. Again and again, I ask myself, would it not have been better if we had not gone into hiding, if we were dead now? But we all recoil from these thoughts, for we still hope. Hope about everything. And on D-Day, June 6, 1944, when news came over the radio of the Normandy invasion, Anne wrote, the best part of the invasion is that I have the feeling that friends are approaching. The group in the annex followed the news, hopeful for the day they could emerge from hiding. But on the fateful day of August 4th, 1944, the Nazi secret police raided the annex. Anne and the others were sent to Westerbork. Then on September 3rd, as allies closed in, the Franks were among the last shipment of Jews sent to Auschwitz. September 5th was the last time Otto Frank ever saw his family. Anne's mother perished at Auschwitz, while Anne and Margot were later moved to Bergen-Belsen. In March of 1945, Margot and Anne both died from typhus at Bergen-Belsen, within just days of each other. 
Only a few weeks later, the camp was liberated, but it was too late for Anne. Of those hiding in the annex, Otto Frank was the only one to survive. Later, when he returned to Amsterdam, he received Anne's diary and photo albums from his friend and co-worker, May Peace. Anne once wrote, I wish to go on living even after my death. With the publishing of her diary in 1947, her dream came true. Her diary now lives on as a testament of courage and hope for others. If a young girl of 13 could uh, take such military action, then we could follow the same Her life was uh, one on which young people could model their own lives. Because to do so, we are following in the footsteps of uh, great fighters for human rights, including Anne Frank. Anne has become a voice for human rights rather than a victim. Today, atrocities still occur, but we can learn from Anne's story. Just three weeks before her capture, young Anne wrote these words. It's really a wonder that I haven't dropped all my ideals because they seem so absurd and impossible to carry out. Yet I keep them because in spite of everything, I still believe that people are good at heart. I simply can't build up my hopes on a foundation consisting of confusion, misery, and death. I see the world gradually being turned into a wilderness. I hear the ever-approaching thunder which will destroy us too. I can feel the suffering of millions. And yet, if I looked up into the heavens, I think that it will all come right that this cruelty too will end, and that peace and tranquility will return again. Eight months later, this sparkling young life ended here at Bergen-Belsen. Somewhere here lies Anne Frank. Everywhere here are memories. They beckon us through the endless stretches of our heart to the knowing commitment that the life of each individual can change the world and make it better. Looking into the past, we can see the terrible toll of discrimination and hatred. But Anne's words encourage us to make a difference in our world today. She once wrote, How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. And those words continue to teach us. At the Women in the World Summit in New York City, advocate Marlo Thomas spoke of Anne. She said, Anne Frank still stands as a shining testament to the unbreakable will and unchecked optimism of the human spirit. Penned in 1948, the preamble to the Declaration of Human Rights is synonymous with Anne's ideals. It states, Recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. Until his death, Otto Frank devoted himself to human rights a task he says he received from Anne. When answering letters from those who'd read his daughter's diary, he'd say, I hope Anne's book will have an effect on the rest of your life so that you will work for unity and peace. The Anne Frank House was founded in 1957. Visited by over a million guests each year, people can experience firsthand her life in hiding and learn of her ideals. People are encouraged to reflect upon the dangers of racism and discrimination and the importance of human rights around the world. In learning about the Holocaust, the horror of it, with all its numbers and statistics, the personal suffering seems distant. But reading Anne's diary reduces the war to a single family's life, the story of one incredible girl. German writer Ernst Schnabel once wrote, her voice is preserved. Out of the millions that were silenced, this voice, no louder than a child's whisper, it has outlasted the shouts of the murderers and has soared above the voices of time. The words of her diary continue to inspire new generations.